From the editors of The Advocate and the worldwide resources of HEAR Networks, this is an Advocate.com special report, Marriage Equality in California. Hi, I'm Steve Kometko, and this is the first in a series of reports on Advocate.com called The Freedom to Marry. It's a right we'd earned once before, about a handful of years ago. But shortly after the first gays and lesbians said, I do, the politicians stepped in and said, oh, no, you don't. And the marriage certificates, cherished by the thousands who flocked to California, were turned into so much paper. Fast forward to this week in California, and once again, the freedom to marry will be legal. Here's Advocate.com's Michael Eldridge. It's been a long battle, but marriage equality has come to California, and we can finally let freedom reign. You can put the starting line all the way back to about 2000, when Proposition 22, the voters in California, voted to uh, define marriage between a man and a woman. In 2004, one man would take Prop 22 head on. Mayor Gavin Newsom, who had just been elected as mayor of San Francisco, decides to marry same-sex couples. You know, remember, we were just trying to put a human face on discrimination. We wanted to marry one couple, a couple of five decades, a half a century of love and constancy and commitment, uh, Phyllis Lyon, Del Martin, and we were going to use that as a test case to advance a constitutional argument against Prop 22. Lo and behold, we were able to go forward for almost a month, 4,036 couples. Our victory was short-lived. On August 12, 2004, the California Supreme Court invalidated all of the marriage licenses. As the Republicans in Washington sought to outlaw our marital rights nationwide, Democratic Party Chair Howard Dean said that our civil rights could be decided by the states. Now my view is the federal government has to say there will be equality under the law. I think it's okay once you say there will be equality under the law to tell the states, I don't care how you achieve this but you have to figure out that everybody has to be equal in the, under the law. It is wrong to discriminate. If we say leave it to the states, aren't we really saying let's not address this for decades? Well, I don't think you can leave it for decades. I, th I think, as we discovered uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, uh, you can't say to a group of people who are disenfranchised, uh, just give us a little more time, the politics isn't right yet. Some couples married in San Francisco wouldn't wait. They sued the state. On May 15, 2008, the California Supreme Court ruled four to three that denying same-sex couples the right to marry was unconstitutional. Marriage equality begins in earnest June 17th, but the fight in California won't end there. In November, uh, some of our political opponents have qualified a constitutional amendment uh, to try to reverse the Supreme Court decision. Uh, the good news is we're in a virtual tie today here in the state of California. What you're always going to hear from people who are against marriage equality is an excuse other than the one that they really are feeling. More often than not, it's an excuse that is just sort of a more palatable thing than I don't believe gay and lesbian Americans should have the same rights as everybody else. So even as we celebrate this week, we'll have to continue the fight for marriage equality in California and throughout the United States. This is a tipping point state. The way California goes, so goes the nation. One thing that's absolutely going to be necessary for me and for every other person in the community between now and November is we can't just sit back and rest on the laurels. We have to fight. What happens here will either move the entire country forward one huge step or set the entire country back. In California, this is Michael Eldridge for The Advocate and Here Networks. While couples are traveling the freedom to marry road to major metropolitan areas like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Diego, that road does not pass through California's Kern County. That's because as county clerk, Ann Barnett has halted all civil weddings at her county offices. Since doing so, she's been called a religious terrorist and some want her to resign. Her office has been flooded by hate mail and she's had to unplug her home phone. Barnett says her offices will still make marriage licenses available to straight and same-sex couples. They just can't get married there. Barnett says she's not making a statement, but just trying to do the right thing. Even as we speak, wedding planners are planning their little fingers to the bone. It boggles the mind, and nowhere is it more boggled than here in West Hollywood, land of the free and home of the airwave. Can there possibly be enough style and substance to go around? Of course. And what about the boon to the local economy? Well, can you say ka-ching? Again, here's Advocate.com's Michael Eldridge. As marriage equality comes to California, thousands of couples are ready for their dreams to come true. That means a lot of preparation, especially here in West Hollywood. Some couples were quick to create the ultimate wedding. Others are rushing, searching for the perfect flowers or food. 
Well, I think it's been really fun. It's an exciting time for um, for us here in California, and love is in the air. And so then people were calling up and going, we don't know what we want. We just want something pretty. And then they were like going, who do we talk to? And it was just kind of a very interesting kind of this mass craziness. Tom Rosa of Cake and Art has seen his business triple. Part of what one study projects will be a $370 million boost to California's economy. At West Hollywood City Hall, everyone's focused on the big day. So we may get a crush, and we're, we're prepared for the crush. And so we are deputizing not only city council here, but senior management as well, and we'll be prepared for whatever numbers show up. We're expecting so many people, we're not even going to do the weddings at City Hall. We're going to do it at one of our parks. Some couples are ready and waiting for June 17th. When I found out, I gave him a big old kiss and asked him to marry me. And there are others who are hoping for a little miracle. I'm going to celebrate, yeah. Find somebody to marry. So if you know somebody, uh, send in your cards and letters because I'm looking. No matter what, as California gets ready to celebrate true marriage equality, joy is the emotion of the day. Every call we get, people are just overwhelmed. We're overwhelmed. Um, we couldn't be busier, but we also couldn't be happier doing it. In West Hollywood, this is Michael Eldridge for The Advocate and Here Networks. I'm Steve Kometko reporting from West Hollywood. Stay tuned to advocate.com or Pick up the current issue of The Advocate for more on California's freedom to marry. If you have wedding pictures you'd like to share with us, please, by all means, send them to us at marriageatadvocate.com. We'd love to see them. We'd love to post them. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words. See you next time. From the editors of The Advocate and the worldwide resources of Here Networks, this is an advocate.com special report. Marriage Equality in California. Hello once again, I'm Steve Kometko, and this is another in a series of reports on Advocate.com about the historic events in California that we're calling the Freedom to Marry. One of the first same-sex weddings is about to take place on the steps of Beverly Hills City Hall, hence all the media trucks behind me. Four years ago, thousands of same-sex couples tied the knot when San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom declared it was their right. Shortly afterwards, however, the legality was challenged and the unions dissolved. But when a California Supreme Court ruling reversed the ban recently, the pilgrimage to the West Coast began anew. From San Francisco now, James Satori reports for Advocate.com. As hundreds of supporters face down a small group of protesters outside San Francisco City Hall, inside, 84-year-old Phyllis Lyon and 87-year-old Del Martin celebrated an historic legal victory and a dream fulfilled. After 55 years as a couple, they were married. The advocate was granted the first and only question right after a ceremony behind closed doors. Yes, I'd like to ask you, how does it feel today, after 55 years, to be legally married? We're very happy and we're very grateful for all of you coming. Do them. <laughs> we are gathered here. They've actually been down this road before. Four years ago, Lyon and Martin, who are gay rights pioneers, were the first of more than 4,000 same-sex couples married when San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom chose to defy a state ban. That led to a legal challenge by anti-gay activists. Eventually, the marriages were voided. But last month, California's Supreme Court ruled the ban on same-sex marriage is just as illegal as banning interracial marriage. Mayor Newsom calls it a movement that will not be stopped. So you better believe it. This is inevitable across the United States. But clearly the battle here is not over yet. Opponents of same-sex marriage have filed an initiative to reinstate the ban, which will go before voters in November. The question is, to what extent has public opinion changed since the initial ban was imposed eight years ago, with 61% of the vote? There has been a true sea change in public opinion in the last decade on this issue. You know, we moved from 25 points back in 2000 to virtually a dead heat today. Meantime, the county clerk's office has taken appointments to marry more than 2,300 same-sex couples over the next 90 days, all, like Phyllis Lyon and Del Martin, simply wanting their loving relationship recognized just as any straight couple. No more, no less. In San Francisco, I'm James Hattori for The Advocate and Here Networks. Robin Tyler and Diane Olson are the first same-sex couple to receive a marriage license and wed in Los Angeles County. Also plaintiffs in the original suit seeking to change the laws, the acting county clerk thought it only right that Tyler and Olson be first in line here. Actually, the word line is too tame to describe the scene. 
Robin and Diane waited a long time for this day. What awaited them when they arrived at the Beverly Hills City Hall was nothing short of a media madhouse. This kind of craziness usually accompanies the appearance of a misbehaving celebrity. But Robin and Diane welcomed all the fuss. Well, it's not just about us. We, we stand on the shoulders of hundreds of activists that fought for this. So the attention is toward us today, but we really have to thank everybody that fought with us. The couple made their way through a gauntlet of family, friends, reporters, and photographers. It wasn't easy. There were also opponents of same-sex marriage carrying signs condemning gays and lesbians. Tell me why you're here today. This is a sin. It's a sin in the eyes of God. After getting their license inside, they came outside. For the record, Robin and Diane wore matching suits they had specially made in Singapore just for this occasion. Then, standing in front of their rabbi, they exchanged vows, rings, and an emotional and passionate embrace. Even though they've been together for years, Robin and Diane thought it was too important not to fight for the right to legally marry. First of all, uh, gays and lesbians should have the choice of marrying, whether or not they want to marry. We should have every right that straight people do, and if they have the choice to marry, we want it. But also, Diane got sick in Hong Kong, and when I said, this is my domestic partner, they didn't know what we were talking about. I can say now, we're married, this is my wife. They will clearly know what that relationship is. While it's San Francisco and Los Angeles that are widely known for being gay friendly, San Diego likewise has a similar reputation and a sizable gay and lesbian community. Wedding bells are ringing there too. Here's John Carroll for Advocate.com. San Diego, a vibrant city of more than a million people. This postcard view of the city's downtown skyline makes it easy to see why it's called America's finest city. But it's the Hillcrest neighborhood where you find the hub of San Diego's GLBT culture. A nice mix of shops, restaurants, and of course, bars. This beautiful area is the heartbeat of the city's LGBT community. Here in Hillcrest, things are a little more laid back than they are in West Hollywood or the Castro for that matter. But don't let the relaxed attitude fool you. When it comes to the subject of gay marriage, the opinions here are as strong as anywhere else. I think it's amazing. 23-year-old Josh Landry says he was overjoyed by the California Supreme Court decision. Marriage isn't in the cards for him at the moment. What's more important is the freedom to marry. I mean, I never thought about marriage, but it's nice to know if I ever wanted to get married, I can. You know, that I have nothing stopping me. At Dream Florist in Hillcrest, there's no doubt about how they view the Supreme Court's action. At this lesbian-owned flower shop, they'll tell you it was the right thing to do but it's also proving to be really good for business. Last week alone, I mean, we had people coming in with inquiries and setting up um, dates and aligning, um, getting their floral arrangements, you know, ahead of time. So, I mean, we've seen traffic, and this is usually a slow time of year for floors. San Diego has been a military town for years, and for a long time, that meant conservatives pretty much ran things. That's not the case these days. Longtime gay journalist Rex Wachner covers the city's GLBT community. It's an old fashioned idea from golly, the 70s maybe, that San Diego is a conservative city where you can't expect uh, liberal California stuff to happen. This is a pretty good place to be gay, and there's not a lot, uh, there's not a lot to fight about, you know. Even, as I said earlier, even our Republican mayor is pro gay. Uh, district attorney is a lesbian, the fire chief is a lesbian, my state senator is a lesbian, my city councilwoman is a lesbian. And so San Diego gets ready to extend marriage rights to its LGBT citizens. And first on the docket, that would be these guys, Tom Felkner and Bob Lehman, who've been together now for 15 years. I think California believes in fairness and that's you know part of why we all live out here. And, and California is a progressive state going back to interracial marriage being uh, that ban being lifted back in 1948. So this is just another historic step that our state's taking. So at this historic time, Felkner and Lehman are representative of thousands of other LGBT San Diegans, proud of their city and of their state for the bold message of equality they hope will now sweep across the country. Stay tuned to Advocate.com for more on the freedom to marry over the next few days, or pick up the latest issue of The Advocate at your local newsstand. I'm Steve Kometko for Advocate.com. Oh, and one more thing. 
If you have wedding pictures you'd like to share with us, please, by all means, send them to us at marriageatadvocate.com. We'd love to see them. We'd love to post them. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words. See you next time. The Advocate and the worldwide resources of HEAR Networks. This is an Advocate.com special report. Marriage Equality in California. Hello, I'm Steve Kometko, and you're watching another Advocate.com special report, Freedom to Marry. On the first full day that same-sex marriages are once again legal in California, same-sex couples are ready, willing, and finally able to wed. We begin our coverage in San Francisco with James Hattori. It's the summer of love all over again for same-sex couples across California. At San Francisco City Hall and in 57 other counties across the state, they lined up for marriage certificates naming Party A and Party B instead of bride and groom. The first couple to tie the knot here Tuesday, Hank Donat and Jeff Halpern, who met in a neighborhood coffee shop eight years ago. Was it important for you guys to be first today? No, what no. was important for me was to marry Jeff Halpern. <laughs> <laughs> this is really special because this is legal and we're equal. And, but most important, I get to spend the rest of my life with the man I love. Equality feels good. <laughs> Outside an ad hoc celebration, supporters showing up just to cheer the newlyweds on and revel in their historic victory. The significance wasn't lost on Leah Shigemura and Helen Zia. They were married by city attorney Dennis Herrera, whose legal team was responsible for the court decision which made this day possible. If it weren't for the political, the movement behind it, the whole drive for equality, we wouldn't be here today. It just would never be possible. Marriage equality, not special treatment. We just love each other and want to have a committed life together and be recognized. In an interview with The Advocate, San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom reflected on the risk he took to marry gays and lesbians four years ago. Your life is this, and the moment in politics is big, but the one thing that carries with you the rest of your life is a principle, is the ability to look back and say, I have no regrets. While the joy filling San Francisco City Hall is real and overwhelming, it's also somewhat tempered by a looming battle over a statewide ballot initiative to reinstate the ban against same-sex marriage, which will go before voters in November. This will be the largest battle on an LGBT rights issue in the history of the country. The other side is saying they're going to spend 10, 20, maybe more millions of dollars, and we know we need to match them dollar for dollar. But on this day, politics is taking a back seat to love and recognition. In San Francisco, I'm James Hattori for The Advocate and Here Networks. Here in West Hollywood, city officials were expecting a steady flow of marriage license applicants. Early on, it appeared as though their expectations were not only met, but exceeded. Kate and Tori Kuykendall, along with their five-month-old daughter, Zara, were in line early at West Hollywood Park. Although they had a commitment ceremony three years ago, they decided they wanted to legalize their union now that they can. It was important to me to be able to, to get married on this day, and, and it, it wasn't so important to be first in line, but to, to make sure that I got an appointment. We got an appointment today. It was nice being able to call her my wife and have people not bat an eye. I look forward to that. There was a lot of media attention in West Hollywood Tuesday morning. A lot of it directed not just at the historic events unfolding, but also at actor and former Star Trek star George Takei. He and his partner of 21 years, Brad Altman, were issued the very first marriage license in WeHo. They'll actually get married in September. Still, cameras followed their every move to the point of distraction. All the cameras, back up. One step, please. Fair-minded Californians hopefully would embrace the fact that marriage should be available to all Californians. This nation was founded by people fleeing religious tyranny, religious oppression. And now they're using their religion to tyrannize the rest of us. The importance of the day and the recognition of their right to marry by the state Supreme Court was not lost on any of the participants. From city officials to John Heilman to local activists to the same-sex couples actually saying their I do's under marriage cabanas set up by the city. I never thought it would happen in, in, in our lifetime. We didn't go to San Francisco during the winter of love, so now we're having an opportunity during the summer of love, uh, and it's, it's very sweet. This is a huge day in history, and um, you know, we're a small city, and we're just a bunch of activists trying to do the right thing, but we really are, ha today is a, is a big, big day, and it's a, it's a humbling but a profoundly gratifying experience to be a part of all of it. The city of West Hollywood provides a flyer with information about obtaining a license, 
and answers to frequently asked questions like, do I have to be a resident of Los Angeles County or the state of California to obtain a license? No, is the answer. Now for more on the day's events, Advocate.com's John Carroll reports from San Diego. It was the big story of the morning for San Diego media. Television, newspaper, and radio reporters all at the historic county building to cover a historic event. The June gloom of San Diego skies doing nothing to dampen the spirits of couples here ready to commit themselves to one another. We're geared up and we believe that we will have a smooth operation. Um, you know, it's a project that, that took some, there's a lot of details, and so we've been working pretty hard for the last three weeks to get ready to go, but we believe we are. San Diego County officials were expecting protesters this morning, and they had the security standing by to deal with it. But as of about 9 this morning, only one guy had shown up. This isn't right. The Rosie O'Donnells of the world aren't right. As the protester shouted at the crowd, another stood silently to answer his message with one of his own. Meantime, hundreds of couples poured into the county building, waiting in line for their chance to get that all-important marriage certificate. And we're doing this also for the generations who come after us, like our grandchildren. Shirley Hall and Sylvia Pamer have been together for 36 years, so they were more than ready to be officially married. A touching scene of vows exchanged was made even more moving by Deputy Commissioner of Civil Marriage Michael Torres. He's done a lot of weddings, but none like this, and the moment was overwhelming. From this very moment, you are now married. Hey, thank you. Thank you. It's my spouse. <laughs> Most couples opted to spend their big moment outside, like Ken Hall and Tom DeBloy, who have been together for 10 years. It's an emotional day, just uh, quite significant in so many ways um, uh, for us personally, and also just recognizing that we're breaking new ground here. The view from San Diego, like elsewhere in California, a scene of love, of commitment, of overwhelming joy at a moment longed for for so long. In San Diego, I'm John Carroll for The Advocate and Here Networks. A final note now, perhaps speaking for everyone lined up to get married in California today, with a nod to his Star Trek past and with an eye to the future, George Takei said, may equality live long and prosper. I'm Steve Kometko. Continue checking in here at advocate.com or pick up The Advocate at your local newsstand for continuing coverage from California of freedom to marry. And if you're one of the newlywed couples, send us your wedding photos. We'd love to post them and share them on your behalf. From the editors of The Advocate and the worldwide resources of Here Networks, this is an Advocate.com special report, Marriage Equality in California. Here we are in Bakersfield, California, standing outside of the county administrator's building to determine exactly why gay people should not be allowed to get married. We entered the administrative center to conduct an interview with Ann Barnett, the Kern County County Clerk, who's refused to conduct same-sex marriages despite a clear directive from the California Supreme Court. She refused to speak to us, sending a messenger instead who handed me a mysterious Band-Aid-sized slip of paper with just a name and a phone number on it. Is this a government entity, the Alliance Defense Fund? No, it is not which we later found out was a right-wing Christian anti-gay group in Scottsdale, Arizona. So why is a non-government entity being a spokesman for a government Sir, employee? Sir, I just told you where to contact. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. Well, what is this organization, the Alliance Defense Fund? If you insist on disrupting our office here, I'll have to call security. It's a financial issue, am I right? Uh, I am not aware of that. Okay, well, what are you aware of then? Okay. I, I'm, our statement is the Alliance Defense Fund is prepared to defend any clerk who exercises his or her right not to perform wedding ceremonies under California law. Does the law say that she can suspend these things? Uh, if you'll hold on one second. Hold Thank on. you. I don't have to answer your question. You don't? No, I don't. I've provided you with the information. But I don't know what it means. I'm asking you to, what does this information mean? Call that number. You can ask all your questions there. So do you know what this is then? I have nothing more to say. Okay. If you don't leave us alone, we're having security come. Leave you alone. The taxpayers should leave you alone.
Not everybody believes the official story that same-sex unions will forever devastate heterosexual marriages. So if two gay people kiss or hold hands, it's, you're not going to suddenly become infertile or... No. <laughs> All throughout Bakersfield, only people of color seem to see through the charade. But back on the main street, it was back to witch burning. And for this gay business to go on like it is, is wrong. And that's all there is to it. Say, okay, you gays want to get married, then okay, fine. Make another law. But when God puts lightning in his ass, then you'll understand the difference. It's an abomination to God. I'm a Christian, I go strictly by the Bible, and it's an abomination as far as I'm concerned. Well, 10% of the animal population, seagulls and dolphins and even penguins, tend to be same sexual. Is that an abomination of God too? I think animals just are kind of stupid. If God made all of us, right, in yes. his own image, yes. and yet a percentage of us are gay, for whatever reason, we now know that it's biological, does that mean that God made a mistake? No, God gave them a choice. They pick it, they choose it, and they go with what they want to do. Do you choose every day to go with a woman? Do you have to like make a decision to like women? Not really. Clearly an exception to his own rule. A handout given me right at the courthouse read, tear apart the theory of evolution and show any skeptic that evolution is based on myths, falsehoods, and outrageous lies. Well, after spending a day in Bakersfield, California, I'm inclined to agree that evolution is a myth because clearly there's precious little evidence of it happening here. In Bakersfield, California, Harrison with you for The Advocate and Here Networks.